What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Anique, I'm a classical pianist and today we are at a very special location. We are at the Landesmuseum Stuttgart. It's a museum for historical instruments here called Fruchtkasten. And uh, we are going to record some Schuppa here today on a very special instrument. Say hello to the Playel double grand piano, which was built in 1898. So uh, it's a pretty old instrument and every time I play here, it's very interesting and I'm very excited to see how it's going to change my playing and my interpretation and so on. So in this video, I thought it might be interesting to talk a little bit about these main differences between a historical instrument and the modern instruments, what we are used to, and uh, how does this affect my playing in that moment and also my interpretation in general. And therefore I'm going to compare this instrument, this historical instrument, with my practicing instrument, which is of course not in the best shape right now. <laughs> but for everyone, you can support me on Patreon, uh, you'll find the link in the description box. Before we get started, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. So one of the main differences for me personally is that the keys are way lighter. It's, it's way easier to play on the keys because they, they don't have that much weight. And this um, has the effect, the positive effect, that I don't really need that much arm weight to play. And, um, and it's not really that tiring to play very fast and, and loud on this instrument. And especially like today, I'm going to play Chopin Etudes and I hope these keys, uh, as they are going to be a little bit lighter, uh, it will support my playing, hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, the recordings are over and uh, I, I did not have enough time to record everything there in the museum, so I just put my thoughts here. <laughs> it was actually much easier to play the Chopin Etudes on the historical instrument, um, especially uh, Opus 10 number 2. Like, you know, you have to play a lot with 3, 4 and 5, and the fourth finger is getting tired very quickly, so I have to find a lot of um, points to relax my arm and so on, um, which I did not have to do on the historical instrument. And for me, it was easier to get into the flow, especially in this etude, um, because like the keys were much lighter compared to my practicing instrument. <laughs> modern instrument I would have to try to relax my arm after every couple of notes like um, here and then until here and then I try to relax again so I have at least two relaxation points and depending on how heavy the keys are I need more and or less <laughs> so for example on the player I did not have to relax through the whole I don't know how many bars these are but I could play through it without trying to relax all the time. The other difference, but main difference is um, for me the pedal because um, you can use much more pedal on a historical instrument compared to a modern um, concert grant where all the harmonies would mix up together if you just push it down and hold it for a longer time. Therefore, I've prepared an example for you um, to see it's uh, the beginning of the third movement of the Waldstein Sonata, where Beethoven writes a pedal over a long time uh, without lifting up the pedal, without changing the pedal. 
And um, this actually does not really work on a modern grand. Let me just show you. Okay, now I'll try exactly the same pedaling on my modern practicing instrument and you will see that the harmonies are going to mix up extremely here. Sometimes I'm wondering how would I play if Beethoven did not write anything about the pedaling into the scores. I think I would play it much more cleaner, like, I mean, it's classical style, so it's not allowed to have a dirty sound there. So I guess I would change the pedal all the time um, to make the sound very clean, um, for example, like this. Now, the problem is Beethoven wrote it into the scores, so I have to think about what exactly was the sound effect that Beethoven wanted to create here. And often it's very helpful for me to like try it on a historical instrument so I get an idea of what it could have sound like back in his time. So for me personally, when I think about this passage in Beethoven's Waldstein Sonata, I feel like he wanted to create a very special atmosphere, maybe like a little bit in a church, for example. So he's kind of creating a church acoustic effect. So I'm not only like trying to recreate the sound of the historical instrument, but I'm trying to understand what was the sound effect he was aiming for and um, like what was the atmosphere he wanted to create there. My job is now to recreate the sound effect or to interpret the sound effect on a modern instrument and try to orientate on a historical instrument. So the first thing I would think of at this part would be um, pushing the pedal only halfway down. So not completely to the ground, but only like um, at the top level. So things are not going to swim completely together. This would sound like this. But as you can hear, it is still pretty dirty, the sound. So I would try to adjust the pedal from time to time a little bit, lifting it up, not completely to the top, but like just a little bit and waving with my foot. <laughs> so um, it gets a little bit cleaner, but not too dry. So this would be kind of a solution for me. Tell me in the comments how you like it. Also, like compared to the historical instrument, which one do you like more, historical or modern instrument? I personally think it's much more relaxing to play this part on a historical instrument because 
you don't have to think that much about the pedal. You can just enjoy what the instrument is doing with the sound and that's, that's awesome. <laughs> As you see, the difference is pretty big and you'll find a couple of these very extreme pedaling moments in piano literature, especially in like romantic piano literature if you look into Chopin's scores, for example. So it's very important to first understand what did the composer want to achieve, like what sound effect did he want to create, and then um, also to see how did it sound on historical instruments, like on the instruments they were using. And then it's my job to recreate or to try to recreate it on a modern instrument or like to try to find a similar um, sound effect. So this was the video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Have you ever played on a historical instrument before? What are the main differences for you? Tell me in the comments. You'll find the recording to the Chopin Etudes up here. If you should ever come to Stuttgart, don't forget to check out this place and take a look at all these beautiful instruments here. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Also, check out my Patreon link in my description box. See you in the next videos. Bye. I... I did not...